I think people do like talking to computers. I think especially with uh, some of the better ones like Alexa, I think Amazon's doing a fantastic job. Do you have it? To take it? Yes. And I love it. I am. I'm one of the only Alexa people I know who freaks. love it. Yeah. No, are you? I am an Alexa freak. Nice. Literally, I talk to Alexa five times a day. Yeah. All she's right. great. Let's do dueling Alexas. <laughs> <laughs> what is your, uh, tell me your, uh, one, one thing you do. I get my headlines every morning. Ah, so, so how when, do you say that? You say, Alexa, what's in the news? I say, Alexa, what are the headlines? Ooh, I don't do that. Yeah. Okay. What about Uber? Did you hook it into Uber to call a car? I didn't. I, I haven't yet. yet. No, that's See, the much problem much with all these voice interfaces is they don't know who's in front of the device. So we're using my company, New Air, to say proximity to the Alexa means that the identity is Dave. So yeah. when I call an Uber, it goes to my account, et cetera. Yeah. But here's so, the problem with, with text interface. It goes back to CLI. Do you remember that acronym from the 1400s when we got on computers? What was that? Command line interface. Yes, it is MS like a command DOS, line interface. Well, there, yeah, I mean, there's, there's ways that efficient. bots are, are essentially command line interface. But I no mean, one remembers those. And there's conversational. I don't know if I agree. I think Slack, especially now, is, is kind of bringing back that idea that we can directly interface with these bots like through these programs, through these platforms, yeah. using a simple set of commands. The problem, though, is kind of making those you know, a cross platform yeah. so that you don't have a different set of commands for each different bot that you're using on each different platform that you're this, using. And this is the issue I'm right. having with uh, Alexa. It takes, a, there's a little bit of onboarding because mm -hmm. I was trying to play music on it. And it's like, you, if you don't, I mean, Amazon- it Took me forever to figure yeah, it out. So you yeah. basically, I, I was able to, the multiple accounts thing is one thing. So now we have two accounts on there. We have my wife's account and mine. And do you have one account or two? Uh, I'm the only one who uses it. Ryan okay. doesn't use it. Yeah. So what you can do is you can set Ryan up and then you say, Alexa, which account is this? Or Alexa, switch accounts. And it says, mm -hmm. now using mm -hmm. Ryan's account. Now using Terrible user Veronica's. experience. Actually, it's, it's okay. Uh, because here's the thing. I have Spotify and I want to use Spotify. So then you're like, Alexa, play Girls Just Want to Have Fun which is like the you know, theme song of our house right now. <laughs> and unfortunately, it then if you just say that, it defaults to Amazon's right. music yeah. service, and then it plays a cover song or some bullshit. You have to say on Spotify. So I say, Alexa, play Cindy Lauper's Girls Just Want to Have Fun on Spotify. Right. And it works. Um, so Spotify is ours. Now go back to another one. Uh, um, so I use Spotify. You did. Timers. Cooking. Timers. Yeah. Oh. Timers are amazing. Timers. Multiple timers. Multiple timers is the key. The bomb. You can when do, do you all of this with Siri, cooking? by the way. See, that's what I do. Heating no, up water for coffee. Siri does this. Siri is garbage. Siri is a garbage you know dumb dummy. so stuck up. Oh, she's the worst. <laughs> she is the worst. So change to the British accent. That way it fits. No, I have the Australian maps. accent, and I have, I have an Australian hot guy who does my Siri, oh, and nice. I don't like him. Yeah. Okay. He's very persnickety. Alexa just does stuff. It works. I don't know why I don't like Siri. She doesn't feel as smart. To She's, me. It's just not well like done. Maybe I haven't Alexa cracked the all code. Goes to the cloud, though. And this is uh, yeah, that was Siri a little does a lot of stuff locally. Yeah, yeah. Siri's just not like an open platform. So mm. the, it, the the amount of stuff that comes out every week, I'd say every month, more stuff comes out on Alexa mm -hmm. than in the cumulative history of Siri. And there's no way of knowing when something new does come to Siri. It's a, you're just no. supposed to, you find out about it on Twitter when people say, like, oh, you can ask her to sketch. No, look, at, I have, you. look at my tray. I, don't care. I put Amazon Alexa in my tray. Wow. Shopping list, number Shopping three. Shopping list is amazing. Huge okay. Game but no, 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 no. Okay, wait, now you see, now you jumped. Yeah. It was my turn. So here's what I do. Shopping this list? Is, no. <laughs> Podcast work, amazing. Right, yeah. So I do Alexa, play on the media. Alexa, play the Joe Rogan podcast. Alexa, play This Week in Tech. It just works. Boom. And then I say, Alexa, play the next, the previous episode. Mm. And that works. And it does it through TuneIn. Right. Uh, okay. Now, you, what were you going to say? You shopping. said shopping. Wistia, get your videos off of YouTube and put them on your site. You don't want to get caught up in marketing other people's services and people and your competitors' videos. You want to use a video player that you have 100% control over. That's what Wistia is. Wistia is gorgeous, easy to use, uh, video hosted, and we use it for, the, I'll tell you a really interesting use case for us for Wistia. We record our incubator classes. We record when I teach somebody how to pitch their company or I coach them, I should say. Um, we record it, then we send it to them. We have it password protected, but it has a log file and it sends me alerts. Hey, the founder of this company logged in to view this video at this time from this IP address and they watched the video this many times and they watched these specific sections of the video. So I actually know as a coach for my startups that they actually did consume the video and when. So I'm sitting there, it's 11 o'clock at night, bing, I get a note. The Cafe X team, boom. The Stay Wonderful team, boom. The This team, that team. 
Daily Drip, bang, awesome company. I see that they're watching their videos, and then I can email, hey, I saw you were watching the video, do you have any questions for me? This is something that you can never do with a, you know, these free services, YouTube, that are interested in getting people to subscribe to their you know, uh, channels and to, and to sort of co-opt your traffic, right? You wanna control it. They have 220,000 customers at Wistia, they all love it, including us, and uh, MailChimp, Moz, HubSpot, Zendesk, Herman Miller, Sam Adams, and This Week in Startups all use it. When they started sponsoring This Week in Startups, and you know they're a great partner for us, we use their product literally every day, they only had 50,000 customers, which is a lot when you think about it. Now they have 220,000, in large part, my ad reads. I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, if I have not convinced you to use, I'm joking. It's a, that it's an amazing product, it's very sticky. They have incredible analytics, as I talked about, and this is the thing we love. Every time you watch a video from us, it says, hey, would you like to get invited to a This Week in Startups Live? Put your email address in here. I fought with Salar and the team over at YouTube to let me capture emails off of YouTube. They would never do it because they want to control you. They don't want you to become independent and powerful. They want you to be dependent on them. Wistia is in your corner, so Wistia lets you collect the email addresses of people watching your videos and put them on your list. YouTube treats you like a baby. They try to control you and manipulate you and not let you get your customers' information. Wistia allows you to get the information. I don't mean to rail against YouTube, but it was very frustrating for me as a content creator to not be able to get the email addresses of my audience. And Wistia happens to be great at this. It's super easy to use. They have support if you run into trouble. New tools and features are built specifically for marketers and other services just don't do that. They have tons of resources to get you off the ground. If you want to get guides to using microphones, building a lighting setup for 100 bucks, using video and email together, any of that stuff, they produce some of the best content marketing around. So if you're thinking about starting a podcast or using video to grow your business, go ahead and visit uh, wistia.com. And um, yeah, create an account today, free. It's free. And you get all the tools and analytics and basic integrations that are free. There's no credit card required, which is a bit of a tell, isn't it, Veronica? When they don't ask you for your credit card, you know that they are, they know they're, they're confident in their service. When they ask you for the credit card, they're not confident. They'll let you use it for free for a bit and uh, go to wistia.com slash twist. It's awesome. Yeah.